Welcome to Watch a Child's Tabletop World, a channel devoted to the love of board gaming. My name is Sweden's Watch a Child, and this is my brief thoughts on Amritsar. If you'd like to see an overview of the game, click on the link on the screen or down below. As always, I like to start with the art and components. Um, the game is quite lovely, set up on the table. I quite like that. Um, the standout, really, to me, uh, is the elephant. There's, it's a, it's like a meeple. Well, it's a mega meeple, a very large meeple. Um, it's screen printed, which is a little extra touch, and it has a little box on the top of it that the elephant is carrying, um, which is where you'll store your donate cubes. And it only stores six, which is the amount that the elephant is able to carry in the game. So I quite like that. It's very cool. Um, you do get your player boards, um, and this is becoming a trend or a standard in the industry. It's what I'm very happy with, uh, and that is having a nice inlaid uh, tray so that it's a multi-piece tray and your cubes and things will sit in there and stay. And so that's what, quite nice. Um, the iconography and everything, very clean, very nice and neat, uh, and the artwork looks good. And then it has in the middle, um, which is completely non-functional non just for show, is you're actually building the temple out of a three you know, chunky wooden pieces, which is very nice. Um, it very much reminds me uh, of the game Pillars of the Earth, where, you know, you're doing something very similar. You're, instead of a golden temple, you're building a cathedral, and you're actually building it kind of out of these pieces of woods, uh, of wood. So, like, it's nice to kind of see that develop as the game goes on. So that's very nice. Now, I really like the theme. Um, I'm very much drawn to all kinds of themes. I love to learn uh, about different places, geographic places. I love to learn about different things, animals, whatever. Um, and so there are, you know, it's, there are some Indian games out there. There's not, they're not super common. Um, you know, Jaipur, uh, uh, Rajas of uh, the Gan Ganges um, was a recent game. Uh, Bombay is another one. So um, Ga Goa, very famous. So, but there are some, but there's not a ton. So it's nice to see some, some a little bit different here. Now the theme itself doesn't tie in super, super strong. I mean, you are building the temple and that does feel like you're building the temple, but it doesn't, um, like, you know, as I'm playing the game, I don't get a super strong sense in terms of the tracks and things. Uh, that's a good, actually, uh, a good way to describe it. There are these knowledge tracks and I, and I really like those, um, those in gaming, but you know, like each of the tracks doesn't really feel like too different to me. Um, you know, oftentimes when you go to those tracks, you'll have like a military track, you'll have a merchant track and a political track. And there's very real significance to each of those that you feel quite differently. Like, you're like, oh, this is helping me in combat. I'm really making a difference here. But, you know, I'd be hard-pressed to know the difference between those. So, you know, there are some wins and some losses, I think, in the, uh, in the th theme department for this game. Now, I mentioned the tracks, and uh, that leads me to my next point, which is that this is a thoroughly modern game. It's like a Frankenstein of a game of different uh, mechanisms. Now, what I mean by that is that this is a type of game that I actually personally love because... It's, it's sort of genre bending. I, I talk about movies a lot. I love movies. And, and some of my favorite movies are the ones that don't really sit in any one genre. And, uh, and this does the same thing. It takes a bunch of little mechanisms from different games. You know, your player board where you sort of can put, choose your actions on there. And when you put things, you can kind of benefits. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Scythe, you know, how you have that, those player boards and maybe not quite as extreme as that game does, but it does have a lot of neat little things there. Um, you have the Mancala mechanism, which is, you know, it's fairly uncommon mechanism. Um, it's used to great effect in one of my favorite games, Five Tribes. And I quite like that a bunch. Um, of course, worker placement being another favorite mechanism of mine. Um, I like how they use it here. It's very interesting. In a lot of worker placement games, you tend to, uh, one of your first type of things is that you build a lot of workers, you try to acquire a lot of workers. And here they don't do quite the same thing. They just say, hey, look, this is the workers and, uh, and you're going to try to maximize your actions when you're moving these workers around the board. And so I th think that's very, very cool. Um, it kind of turns it on its head a little bit. And then the knowledge tracks, as I mentioned, those are kind of like in some different games. And a very odd game, uh, a very like weird game to bring up. A Jet Set, I remember that's one game. There's some other games that I know that, that I just can't think of right now that that tend to do that, where you'll you'll move up enough on the track and then you'll get that benefit every single time. And like Jet Set, you always kind of you build these routes and you're kind of always going to get those benefits from those things. So um, again, like <clears throat> a lot of modern mechanisms and, and and they're all kind of mashed together, which I think is really pretty awesome. You know, the other thing is that the, that very similar to that is is the idea that. I love the, the the fact that you on your turn you're getting something, and you know if you, it's not your turn you're going to get something also but not quite as good. And this is something that it seems to be more prevalent in games nowadays. Um, it, it isn't. Uh, it is you know it's an older it's a very old mechanism. You know we've seen it in the, in a lot of games like Puerto Rico and uh, and and San Juan and Race for Galaxy etc. And you know it keeps you really invested on the other players' turns. You know you you're not just like you know 
you know, while they're analysis paralysing around the board, you're not just kind of like looking at the ceilings of it. You're thinking like, oh, if they stop with that worker, I'm going to get to activate this. And that's really cool. And sometimes you can't. And so you maybe that incentivizes doing these Mahout actions, maybe filling that up a little bit quicker. So, um, but then it's at the cost of maybe taking those build actions to build some more storehouses, which is another very important thing. Um, which reminds me also is that that's kind of another little modern mechanism. You know, Uve and like maybe Concordia, uh, you know, how they kind of, those kind of games and things, they will limit, you know, their little, th they, they throw on little speed bumps. You can't just get all the marble and all the copper in these really efficient ways. You keep having to stop because you have to like build uh, the little storehouses and things. And I think that's very interesting. Um, and then there's plenty of player interaction in this one. This one seems very, very much uh, like, not so much like you're affecting what other players will do, uh, you know, or, or screwing what they're like going to take that kind of way, but you're essentially, you know, you're competing over those those squares, you know, those building the the donations and things, and it's any kind of choice to like say, hey, you know, what, maybe I should build a couple of small ones on each place, you know, and then see, you know, and then every time somebody places one, I'm gonna get you know some trickle down points, uh, you know, so that's a very kind of an, an interesting part of it. I think it's the choice of like, do I just say screw it? I'm gonna build everything else up while people are building the small ones and then I'll come in and build the big ones. Sure, they'll get some points, but I've also built a bunch of stuff on my board. And so that's kind of a nice little choice there. However, it is a very tactical game. Uh, you know, it's it's very hard to look forward and there's not a huge long-term strategy. You know, you might work towards some of your goals or whatever, or you might work towards doing more with the market or more with some, you know, uh, more with the storehouses or something. But essentially, like, you are, you're building this thing. Everything's kind of going towards that major goal of building the Golden Temple, which is the point of the game. Um, but it means everything's very, very tactical. And maybe on the little bit on the negative side, for me personally, I find it, like, impossibly hard to, like, certain games, and this is one of them, I, I look at them like, I don't know, like, I'm just doing me. I'm just going to do what I, I'm trying to do this and make the most efficient actions. I can't tell, like, am I putting this worker here? That's going to help this other person. Or are they going to draft this? Or what can they do on their turn? Forget it. I can't do it. It's too much. <laughs> can't do it. It's too much to, to keep track of and stuff like that. So um, it is a very tactical game. And I, and I and although you're interacting with your opponents, I don't feel it's very easy for me personally to, to figure out how to stop them or affect their moves. And in that way too, everything that you're kind of doing, it's a bit of a, like a point salad in a way because it's a lot of good stuff. Like anything you do, any turn you take, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this. You're gonna get things. I mean, you might not get the mix of things that you, as many actions as you wanted, or maybe the actions that you got aren't gonna be as good as you wanted. You're gonna get some of the stuff you wanted, some of the other things that are sort of incidental. You're like, oh, well, I guess I'll just move my track up here. And so it's a lot of just good stuff. So you feel kind of good on your turn. It's psychologically nice to get a lot of good stuff. Now, on the bad side, I think I tend to want to, uh, you know, I don't tend to like the games where just you're getting points for a lot of different things all the time. So that's, um, it, it's it's in a few ways. Okay, let me explain this way. I feel like I tend to like to be able to go for different strategies in games, and I don't think it can do that here. I also really like, I kind of mentioned the knowledge track thing before, a lot of the theme isn't like, um, I like a theme to be, you know, very strong, so I, it reduces my bandwidth. So I think like, Oh, if I get wood, I can build the wooden ships and then I can get the iron and I can build the iron ships and then maybe I can work on shipping. You know, I like being steering towards a certain thing, you know, and in this game, uh, it feels almost a little bit like um, I think of that game, uh, Russian Railroads, where like, you know, it's it's kind of spreadsheety. You're like taking different actions and then you're thinking like, do I want this? How does this affect me again? Where it's much more natural when it's a little more imbued in the theme. Um, so, yeah, there's that, that's a, that's it's kind of hard to you know, it's, it's, it's hard to like really come up with a big strategy or change your strategy. And the other thing, I, I know that this game is making you build, wanting you to build the uh, Golden Temple, but you know, I kind of, it makes me think, I keep mentioning other games, this is kind of a weird review, but you know, it's because it's such a, uh, a modern design, but like, you know, like I think of like video culture, like in that game, you know, you, you can do other things. You can, you can get some cheese, you can, you can do a few other things and, and get some other points, but, but you have to do the wine. That's the major thing. And I think that's very similar here. I prefer to be able to go out a game and try different different strategies. Like it gives more life to the game. I feel like, oh, this time I'm going to try, you know, the, this kind of strategy that's different, and it brings a little more life. And and then and then I get to try to like say like ah, maybe that'll work better, you know. And it's just a little more interesting for me personally. A couple of the points I should have mentioned actually in the components part. Um, there's a weird part where there's like this 
when you build the storehouses and the objective tiles and, and uh, the Mahout tiles, um, uh, you, you're supposed to spend like copper and gold and marble for them. And I looked in the inst instructions and, and it was after I played some and I was like a couple of games and I was like, you're supposed to spend these. And I, and it looked like it was on the board and I like went to look at the board and it's not on the board. And I would guarantee like 99% of people that play this game are, are not going to catch that, which is weird because you, they could have printed it easily printed on the board. There's, there's printing on the board already and it's not printed on the action things. And then that kind of brings me to my next point is it's not on a player aid either because there is no player aid. Now, everything seems pretty, I mean, it's not a difficult um, game to learn. There's a few concepts you're like, oh, I get it now. But I really think there's a lot of icons and you can understand what they are, but I, I did find like, I think just even, you know, not every player needs one, but I think one sheet, double-sided sheet with some of the symbols and stuff, because there's quite a lot of symbols. You have to keep going back in and looking and stuff. And then the objectives and things, you know, I could get that those you have to look up, but I, I just, I think it would have really helped having a player aid as well. I should have mentioned those in that part of it, but so a very nice little production, um, very lovely to look at, uh, nice art and etc. cetera. Um, I like the modern design, a lot of modern mechanisms all kind of bashed together, creating a little Frankenstein of a game, which I really enjoy that. Um, I like everything that kind of goes in, so I like the end product as well. Um, I do, I think I wasn't like blown away by it because I do like, prefer a little more strategy over tactics. And uh, I wish that there was a little bit more thematic tie to some of the things, like I pointed out those knowledge tracks and, and it carries over into some other areas as well. Although there are some strong thematics in the game as well, I will say. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish there was a few more paths to victory, maybe a little easier to, to, to predict what my opponents might do. But um, other than that, hopefully this will have helped you to decide whether this game is for you or not. Uh, but if you want to see a overview of the game, you can click the link on the screen or down below. But for now, I got to roll.